Mindfulness has become very popular in recent years, particularly in Europe and North America, that exists mostly among the middle and upper classes. Many people are coming to the practice of mindfulness for its proven health benefits, for its ability to relieve stress from an engaged Buddhist perspective. These are only secondary benefits, not the actual aims of meditation practice. This type of meditation practice, stripped of its ethical framework, can be a form of escapism. And there are the teaching of the Buddha, meditation and mindfulness included, are intended to bring about the elimination of suffering both of the personal, internal kind, as well as suffering brought about by external factors such as climate change and structural violence. We cannot just run away from the problems, from the suffering in the world. We must confront and face these challenges. The question must be asked, what exactly do we mean when we talk about mindfulness? In its original Pali form, from which mindfulness comes to us in translation, we have the word sati, S-A-T-I, sati. In different contexts, within the various Buddhist traditions, this term has a range of implications and meaning. There is no standardized definition of the term across Buddhist traditions, but there are aspects of the teachings of the Buddha, ethics and motivation, that are indispensable when it comes to meditation and mindfulness. The word sati literally means memory or recollection, to recall something. The opposite term being forgetfulness. In this original context, spoken by the Buddha and his followers, sati has a variety of implications, none of which are fully captured with the term mindfulness. Sati or recollection can mean remembrance of things past, to remember what one is doing in the present, to remember to maintain awareness in the present moment, and also to remember things plan for the future, goals or aspirations. For us here today, in the modern world, the term mindfulness has very different connotations and is often described in contemporary discourses as something akin to a state of moment to moment non-judgmental awareness. This contemporary understanding of what mindfulness means come in part to us from the American doctor, Joe Kabat-Shin, who has some background in Zen training, but he reportedly borrowed from other traditions in his formation of this definition. This, in fact, may be a fine definition and a wonderful thing to practice for some. It may be, in fact, bringing much benefit to people and to the world. 
but it is a limited definition. Decontextualized from the rest of the Buddha's teachings. One that doesn't encompass the full meaning of what the Buddha taught about mindfulness and interconnected relationship to the Noble Eightfold Path, <coughs> to the rest of the Buddhist path to enlightenment. Without the rest of the Noble Eightfold Path, including ethics, without prime motivation, the motivation to benefit others and achieve enlightenment on their behalf, a fixation exclusively on mindfulness has the potential to devolve into something unwholesome, something negative. We have seen this phenomenon recently labeled Mac mindfulness. Mac mindfulness. David Loy, an American Buddhist among others, has written brilliantly on this matter, Mac Mindfulness. Mindfulness in its current secular life definition as simply non-judgmental awareness is ethically neutral. This practice, when decontextualized from the rest of the Buddha's path, can be used for a range of ends, from remarkable positive to sinister. We see this phenomenon manifesting with corporate CEOs, such as Rupert Murdoch, head of a massive but deceitful media empire. Mr. Murdoch has reportedly taken up a meditation practice, good for him. The problem that too many in the world have seen is that the content of his mind is not likely changing for the better.